Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you happen to be new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back you magnificent legend. That's what you get for subscribing by the way. Free compliments at the start of these videos. Now while this video will be chapter marked, so if you want to jump to any particular topic for Tower of Fantasy, go on and feel free to do so. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments because I'm here just to help educate you on what this MMORPG is. So let's go ahead and dive into it. What type of game is Tower of Fantasy? Well, it's a free to play, gotcha, open world action MMORPG that is releasing globally on August the 10th. It will be coming later to Steam, currently scheduled for fourth quarter 2022, but I do want you to think of this as more of an MMORPG than something like Genshin Impact, but there are going to be some very clear parallels to when, if you've played Genshin Impact before. You also are going to have the same kind of open world traversal like you've seen in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but the world is shared and you will be on a server whenever you choose to play. Now, what kind of systems and games are supported? Is there crossplay? And the game is coming to PC and mobile with crossplay and cross progression. So you will be able to play on multiple devices, but you will need to make sure that your account is set up and linked. So if you log in on mobile and it creates an account for you, and then you log in on PC with a different account, those are two separate accounts. So be sure that if you're watching this before the game comes out, that you have your account set up and ready to go. So it makes it an easy and easy, a simple transition. I ran into a lot of that with a lot of people who ended up making multiple accounts with Genshin Impact, and hopefully you'll be able to get a jump start on that before you play Tower of Fantasy. Now, is there controller support? And yes, it is uh, a game that does support controller support. And even on Steam, it is already being stated that it has partial controller support. I will be releasing a controller guide for Tower of Fantasy. So if you have any additional questions, be sure to check the channel homepage or uh, look in the links or the cards or something like that. And I'll try to make sure that these are linked together, depending on what order you end up watching these videos in. Now, what kind of setting is Tower of Fantasy? Well, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi world on a planet called Ada. Now, you can clearly see here it's a very anime-style game, very beautiful uh, world to explore, and we'll be diving more into the setting and the lore of this game in future videos. But a big question for me, this was kind of a something I'm always looking for in terms of these kind of games, is there PvP? And yes, there is. Now, it's not going to be like full on, you're going to get run up and, and destroyed, but there is the ability to have PvP in Tower of Fantasy. So just note, that is something that is also clearly different from Genshin Impact. Also, in regards to the combat, there's a lot more that you can do within the combat cycle in this game, but I'll be sure to do a deeper dive guide for that here for you in the near future. Now, being that this is an MMO and the world is shared, let's talk about the ability to steal your treasure chests because this might be a deal breaker for some, but we're going to explore more details right now. So this is an MMO. The world is shared and there are both exclusive resources and also shared resources. So treasure chests that are actually specifically shared will appear randomly in different parts of this game. Uh, and these can actually be opened by anyone. There are exclusive resources like supplied cables, uh, dandelions, eating flowers, uh, tar caves, thorns, and the like. And these are gonna produce purple or gold cores for you. Uh, these are bound to your character specifically and you don't have to worry about them actually being taken by anyone else. So there is a collection of shared resources and a collection of exclusive resources. And it all just depends on how you're playing the game in this regard. So just keep that in mind. You will get a good feel for that as you jump into the world. Is there time gating in this game as a gotcha MMO free to play game? Well, yes, there are parts of the main story quest, much like Genshin and even your level that are going to be time gated and they will increase after the daily reset. They're going to really want you coming back to the game daily. And if this is something that is a deal breaker for you, then I'm happy that I was able to help. But if you're just somebody who wants to just kind of have a nice, casual, fun experience with this MMO, uh, just know that's why maybe you can't progress the level or you can't progress the story or my kids are fighting over Legos in the background of the video. All right, so now let's explore one of perhaps the biggest questions of the video. Is Tower of Fantasy a pay to win game? Well, Tower of Fantasy is free to play and it does contain, uh, contain some microtransactions for more advanced features like a battle pass, as well as various cosmetics that can be bought with real money. Now, Tower of Fantasy is also defined as a gotcha game. The game's currencies are farmable, which means they're going to be a time 
exchange for that. And I bet you, and I tell you hands down because this is how free to play games work, when it comes to a farmable currency, I'm glad that it exists. But you will hear people complain that it's obviously much easier just to spend the money rather than just go farm the currency. That's kind of the nature of it. So it's going to be your time. It's going to be your choice. It's going to be your money. I'm not here to judge you on what you do, but that's essentially kind of how the system works. So even the currencies that let you actually take part in the gotcha mechanics are farmable. So better characters and weapons you can farm. That is not going to prevent you from getting these kind of items. Now, the system also has pity and pull rates here. The standard banner here is going to be 1 in 80 rolls are going to guarantee you an SSR character or weapon. Now, your first roll for this is actually going to be a 1 in 30. And here's the thing. Pity actually doesn't reset. So even if you get your SSR character on a 79th roll, you still will get one on the 80th. So that's not just because you got it earlier. Does it reset? 1 in 80. That's going to be kind of your pity uh, standard that the system is going to kind of feed you. Now, regarding the gotcha currency, you have Black Nucleus. This is where you get this from finishing mission, completing achievements, exploring the open world. Gold Nucleus is the same process, or you can purchase it from the shop. The Red Nucleus is going to have be through special events, and you can buy it off the shop. Dark Crystals can be gifted, missions, or achievements earned. And then Tanum, this is going to be acquired just from the shop itself. So you have five different currencies. Uh, most of them can be earned and farmed. Uh, Tanum is the only one that is currently acquirable only via the store. Now, can you customize your character? And yes, your character is actually fully customizable, but you will unlock pre-designed playable characters called crumbs. And I'm probably butchering that word. Welcome to the channel, dyslexia for the win. Anyway, what is a crumb? Well, these are skins that you actually unlock. When you obtain a weapon, you actually unlock the skin of the character who uses that weapon. Now, once you upgrade that weapon associated with the character to a three-star, you will actually unlock the skin, meaning you need at least three copies of a weapon. Uh, and we'll go right now uh, here into the different um, similar crumb that you have available, the characters that you can unlock. Ian, uh, the weapon is gonna be the Pulmerizer. Uh, she uses an ice shell hammer. Echo is gonna use the Void Halliburn. Then you have Pepper, she's gonna use the Volt Staff. Then you have Hilda, she's gonna use the ice shell chain gun. Then you have Bei Ling, is gonna use the Grievous Bow. You have Zero is going to use the Flame Cube, or AAK Catalyst, Magic, Fire Magic in this case. Huma is going to use the Flame Shield Axe. Then you have uh, Tusabuna, or Hain, is going to use the Ice Shell Bow. The Shiro is going to use the Grievous uh, Chakram. Then you have King is going to use the Flame Scythe. Then you have Korra Kantar, and I'm butchering the name, I apologize. Ice Shell Staff in this case. Then you have Gladia uh, is going to use the Grievous Sword. Then you have Crow is going to use the Vault Dual Blades. Then you have Meryl. She's going to use the Ice Shell Claymore. And then you have Samir who's going to use the Vault Dual Pistols. So you have a wide selection of characters. And I would venture to bet if you're watching this sometime in the future, more characters will be added. But this then asks the question, is there a class style system? And you actually don't choose a class, but your abilities are dictated by the three weapons that you will carry with you. So there's a lot of possibilities when it comes to your specific build and how you choose to engage the game. Now, regarding the minimum and recommended PC requirements, minimum, you're looking at Windows 7, recommended Windows 10. Uh, for the processor, you're looking at a Core i5 for the minimum, i7 uh, for the, the recommended. You're looking at eight gigs for the minimum, 16 gigs uh, for the recommended, and a GTX GT 1030 with DirectX 11 for the minimum, and a GTX 1060 with six gigs or higher and a DirectX 11 for the recommended. Android, they recommend Snapdragon, at least a 855, uh, then Karen an eight, uh, 980, and then Dementricity at 800 and, and above. And then for iOS, the following iPhones are supported, 11, 11 Pro, 11 Max, 2nd E, 2nd Gen, XS, Max, RR, XR, 12, 12 Mini, 12 Pro, 12 Max, 13, 14, 15, etc. So all the new ones, etc. in that regards. Guys, this is going to be, I think, a pretty interesting game, especially if you enjoyed Genshin Impact and you wanted a little bit more social features rather than kind of that single player and then inviting into the shared world. So this is a shared world MMORPG. It releases August the 10th. If you have any questions, sound off below. I've got a couple other videos planned that I hope to get out before the game comes out. Uh, so I'll uh, keep it locked here to the channel if you feel like it earns it. And hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Appreciate your time. And hopefully I'll see you next time. But until then, take care. Yeah.
It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Ooh.